Welcome back to Let's Launch. In this video, we'll continue the video on the SpaceX Starship. By the way, if you haven't watched the previous videos in the series, you should really watch them. Only if you're on a computer, they will be displayed on the top right corner right now. Anyways, in this video, we'll talk about the experiments and development of this amazing ship. Let's get started. The development of the craft has been slow and experimental and mostly funded by the company itself. The experiments are done by the rocket prototypes. In certain cases, they have been well over pressured to try and make it explode. This would have been done in this case to make it to, to prove that they can go well over the required amount of pressure. They conduct static fires before a launch, mainly to make sure everything is working properly. After all the tests are successful, if they are, they will continue and maybe launch the vehicle. The prototypes that have launched go to a certain altitude and then attempt to land. The first craft ever made that used a Raptor engine was the Star Hopper. The craft had three legs, which could not be retracted, and it was considerably smaller than the real craft. In April 2019, they did two hops each on tether. Then later that year, around July, they did an untethered flight. The untethered flight went 25 meters or 80 feet. Then, in August the same year, it went 150 meters, 500 feet, six times the previous ones. One month later, the CEO presented plans for the booster, the in-space refueling capacities, the landing procedure of the upper stage, heat shielding, potential of the places it could go, and a change in design. This is when they changed the body from carbon composites to stainless steel. Some reasons were the lower cost, the ease of ma manufacturing, and the higher melting point. The MK1 and 2 prototypes were said to have already been in production before the announcements and changes. MK1 was at Boca Chica, Texas, while MK2 was at Cocoa, Florida. None of, the, none of them flew as MK1 was destroyed in a pressure test while the MK2's facilities were being unconstructed. Afterwards, SpaceX started uh, attaching the prefix SN to the upper stage variants instead of MK. SN1, 2, 3, 4, and 4 never flew. SN5 had only one Raptor engine and went 150 meters or 500 feet high, and SN6 repeated the hop. Both craft landed successfully. In September 2020, they, the, they pressure tested to SN7, which was made from a different grade of steel than the previous versions. That same month, they fired a, a vacuum Raptor engine for the full expected duration. SN8 was the first prototype to attempt a high altitude flight. In December 2020, the craft flew to an altitude of 12 and a half kilometers. Then, when it shut down its engines, they cut out one at a time to minimize shock. Then, it proceeded with its normal belly flop maneuver. When pulling out, a leak caused the craft to lose thrust, resulting in a crash to the ground. While doing this, they violated their launch license, resulting in a two month investigation by the FAA. In February 2021, SN9 launched to an altitude of 10 kilometers, a full 2.5 kilometers below SN8. It had a similar crash sequence to SN8, but unlike last time, this time it was within their bounds. Starship prototype SN10 launched pretty much the same as the previous ones. On the 3rd of March, it, but it actually landed. But after about 10 minutes of successfully landing, a methane leak caused it to explode. SN11 launched on the 30th of the same March, and during its ascent, you can see flames from its engine. They did not affect the ascent, but on descent, it caused a leak, it caused a prototype to explode. The prototypes SN12, 13, and SN14 were scrapped, leaving SN15 to fly. The craft launched successfully and then also landed successfully, marking the first Starship prototype to land successfully and not catch on fire. Thanks for watching and that's it for this video. If you enjoyed the video, then please consider clicking the like button and consider subscribing. Some videos that you will probably enjoy will be displayed on screen. By the way, if you want, the full video will also be displayed and that will be a good thing to watch if you haven't watched the previous parts, as you don't have to constantly watch intros and outros. Thanks again for watching.